Welcome everyone for the latest installment in my Making Minecraft Perfect series. Today we're covering exploration, also known as the adventure aspect of Minecraft. And we've got quite a few things to go over for this one, from new terrain generation, to new villager professions, new structures, and even a whole new mode of transportation, and much more. There's a lot to talk about today, so I'm not gonna waste any time in getting into it. And no, don't worry, I'm not putting a mod on a Patreon for this. Before we get right into the new things, I'd like to talk about improving an existing structure first. That is the ancient city. The ancient city is probably the most dangerous place in the entire game. Taking this into consideration, its loot does feel a bit lackluster. Recovery compasses aren't very useful if you just remember where you died. Swift Sneak is a nice enchantment, but is most useful in the ancient city itself. Many people seem to agree that the loot could stand to be a little bit better at least. And one suggestion I have for that has to do with the Echo Shards and a new use for them. See, Amethyst Shards can be used for armor trims, and Echo Shards are the same type of resource. So, why can't we also use Echo Shards? It would be like if you could use iron ingots for armor trims, but not gold ingots. So, how about have Echo Shards be a viable resource for armor trimming? They could be a pretty unique look with the pitch black combined with the blue. But also some more functional rewards would certainly be nice. And with the improved progression system that I talked about in my earlier video, the ancient city could certainly have some unique spells found there. Specifically ones related to Skulk, of course. But let's move on to the next subject. A lot of recent Minecraft structures have been massive with unique rewards, even mobs, some even being the focus of an entire update, which makes for one content-packed structure. And while this is great, putting so much focus into one structure creates some issues in other areas, leaving many of the game's other biomes without any sort of structure especially seeing as most new structures have been underground. I think we need a structure update. The last time we saw a small sort of atmospheric structure was the ruined portal. Most recent Minecraft structures have been huge with the exception of the trail ruins, but even that structure was one of if not the largest feature of the update it came in. But we really haven't seen any structures like the Desert Temple, the Jungle Temple, and the Igloo in so long. Those structures are small to medium sized, and they exist, one, for the sake of atmosphere and adding atmosphere to the biome that they spawn in, and two, enticing the player to explore the surface more in addition to underground, because without these structures on ground level, you would only be able to get loot below ground. But with surface structures, you can also find iron and diamonds and other resources from exploring the surface. And of course, these structures just gave you something nice to see in the world. They also reminded you of the past. You could tell humans once lived there. So how about an entire mini update that's focused around just adding new atmospheric structures like that to biomes that don't really have any unique structures in them. For example, a Badlands temple is something that people have been wanting for a long time, and we'll get into the villages in a moment. But for some other biomes, for example, an ice temple in the ice spikes, maybe a log cabin in the taiga, ruins in the plains, maybe even a little cherry temple in the cherry grove, because remember, you're not exploring this world as the first person alive, you're exploring it as the last one left. Man, that sounds dark saying it out loud. But the point is, is that we know that there were once grand civilizations living on the surface in the overworld, at least if the community's knowledge of the lore is correct. But we see pretty much nothing of where these civilizations actually lived while on the surface. The closest thing we see is the trail ruins, but even that is 
just a small little village, and we can tell from the architecture and how deep it is buried that it was likely from the very dawn of human civilization. So more ruins would certainly be a nice thing to see. In particular, I would like to see a new ruined city structure. This would generate like a village, but instead with partly destroyed stone buildings that are also lightly buried in dirt and gravel. This could be an archaeology site as well, expanding on that a bit more, and there could also be loot found in chests. Maybe even sometimes a ruined cobblestone wall could generate around the city. But again, this would be on the surface, just a little bit covered in dirt, unlike the trail ruins. Players would stumble upon this and really begin to wonder what happened here. Perhaps you could even find some illagers living in these ruins or using them as bases of operation. In fact, that segues quite well into another structure idea, the illager camp, where pillagers or illager hunters would stay in the savanna biome while hunting animals. Some kind of a mountain temple could also be nice. And really, Mojang could probably add all of these in one update because, again, they don't need tons of unique mobs and rewards and blocks and everything. They're there for the sake of atmosphere and adding more loot to the surface, and also just creating some more interesting sites in the overworld. That being said, some of these structures could certainly have unique armor trims at least, and maybe some music discs, but the other structure, or rather new structure type I want to talk about is new village variants. Why not introduce new village types to different biomes? And some of these villages could have unique villager specializations. For example, in the Badlands, there could be a Badlands village with a demolitionist villager, one who sells TNT, gunpowder, fireworks, those sorts of things. How about a Cherry Grove village with a florist villager? A Birch Forest village with a beekeeper profession? And maybe even a swamp village with an engineer profession, since slime is so common there. I know people also want jungle villages, but I'm just not certain how those would work. Especially in trees with villagers pathfinding. Anyway, these villagers don't need to sell any unique exclusive items. Rather, they are just a different way to get items or to get emeralds from selling things to, of course, encourage the player to go and find these villages for these specific villagers, so that the player can no longer get everything in one place. They can still get everything they need in one place. In fact, they can still technically get every item, just if they want to get something through a villager or they want a specific villager type, they might need to go find a different type of village. It's not that big of a deal, it doesn't impact or harm the sandbox element of the game really, but what it does do is add more incentive for players to explore and find different village types. And notice that all of these new villager professions are quite niche ones, unlike say armorers or weaponsmiths. Most players won't have much need for them, but if you want a total complete villager trading hall, then you're going to have to seek out these other villager types and transport them somehow. They're basically just a nice bonus for those who go through the effort to find them. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk terrain generation. The Caves and Cliffs update brought Minecraft's terrain generation to new heights, literally. It made for some very nice mountains, however, there is one problem with Minecraft's current terrain generation, and that's that almost all water always generates at the same height. It's extremely formulaic and predictable, and really holds back the terrain from being truly awe-inspiring. I propose that lakes and rivers be able to generate at different heights. Not only this, but rivers can generate in much more varied sizes now and depths as well. And they can also move downstream, going from one altitude to another. Imagine, if you will, you're up exploring in the mountains and then you suddenly just come across a huge lake there. 
wouldn't that be a nice sight? And then even imagine down that mountain is a little stream flowing, not some massive, ridiculously deep river, but just a few blocks wide of shallow water flowing down, but it looks really nice. And then eventually at the foot of that mountain, there's a sudden drop off and you have a waterfall. See, water always generating at the same height in many cases prevents terrain generation from being much more unique than it currently is. More variety is always a good thing to have when it comes to terrain generation. So what the player can go, yeah, this landscape is truly unique. But with current terrain generation, a lot of areas just feel the same or far too similar, and I think this could certainly help change that. Right now, pretty much all rivers are the same size. Every player is playing and building near pretty much the same river. Shouldn't they be different? Shouldn't they be unique? Why aren't there some massive rivers that are dozens upon dozens of blocks in width? And then why aren't there some small little streams? You get what I'm saying? It's Minecraft. It should be unique to as many players as possible. And getting back to that waterfall idea, this is why I propose adding natural features to Minecraft, or more of them. Of course, right now we do have a few, like rivers, caves, cliffs, and so on, but there could be much more. And this could again make terrain generation a lot more interesting and varied and unique to each player's world. I suggest splitting natural features into two groups, one, regular natural features, and two, rare natural features. The first would be ones like that regular waterfall that leads to a little pond. Maybe sometimes there could be a little ruin or dungeon structure that spawns behind the waterfall just because, you know, why not? It's fun. But the rare natural features are a lot more important. These, as the name suggests, would be very rare and very hard to find. Not only this, but they would be massive. For example, volcanoes. People have wanted those for so long. Larger waterfalls, pits, even giant plateaus, and so on. These benefit exploration in the sense that just knowing that these incredible sites are out there could incentivize most players to explore Imagine, right now you know how the terrain generation works, it's always pretty much going to do the same thing. But then, with these rare natural features, there's always that chance that when you turn a corner, there could be a giant plateau or a big volcano. Who wouldn't want to explore just knowing that those things are out there? And they don't need to have unique blocks or mobs or items even, though they certainly could. But they don't need that much time and effort put into them. They're just there for the sake of the player knowing that they're there. And then this also benefits building because, well, when a player stumbles upon one of these massive land features, the likelihood is that they're going to be inspired to build on them. Maybe some villager or some structures could have maps to these land features, but I don't really think that's necessary though perhaps they would be nice as very rare structure loot. Still, updating terrain generation in any way has proved to be not easy and very time-consuming for Mojang in the past, but if it's only updating water generation, I hope that wouldn't be too difficult of a task. And then these new natural features would generate pretty much like structures just built into the natural environment. And now it's time for the final subject of discussion in this video. Minecraft has a few different modes of transportation, but they're all very unbalanced. Minecarts are just a total waste of time and resources in survival mode, unless you're using them for a roller coaster or something. They're terrible for actually traveling from place to place. Horses are alright, but again, better than minecarts by an absurd amount. And then Elytra is just even better than both of them by so much. Which especially doesn't make much sense given the fact that 
honestly, you can probably get an Elytra quicker than you can set up a large railroad system. Well, first let's start by buffing minecarts. I've seen the idea of copper-powered rails thrown around a few times now, and I think it's a great idea. Copper is mostly decorative right now, which is fine, but many people understandably want it to have some more practical functions. And then this would of course also give honey more practical functions by using it on the rails. This way, powered rails would be much cheaper. Maybe the old redstone and gold ones could be kept around as an even faster type of powered rail. In addition to this, just buffing the overall speed of minecarts would be quite nice. And Mojang is actually now, as of me recording this, just showing some interest in buffing or improving minecarts. With a recent snapshot, they added some experimental changes to them, particularly the one of a game rule that lets you customize max minecart speed, but right now it's still set to the original number of 8 by default. I certainly think it should be set higher automatically, but at least Mojang is interested in improving minecarts we know now. But now let's talk about horses. I've seen people say that horses should be buffed to balance things out, and some people say that horses should be nerfed to balance things out. But I say, how about a little bit of both? Horses can be able to pass through leaves, and so can the player while they're on the horse. But, just like the player needs to eat every once in a while while running, so do horses now. This way, minecarts are more food efficient than horses, but of course, horses are your better bet for going to new areas. As for the Elytra, this is definitely a trickier one and probably a much more controversial one to solve. But first, end cities are way too easy to loot. They have very little challenge in them now. Especially since the slow falling potion was introduced, you can pretty much just drink one of those and you're fine. If you are even remotely well equipped, you have just about zero chance of dying. And then if you also already have an elytra, you can just glide down if you levitate too high. So what I propose is whenever a shulker shot hits a player, the player will automatically lose any slow falling effects that they had. And in addition to this, the hit from the shulker will temporarily disable their elytra for, let's say about 30 seconds, long enough so that they can't use it before they fall. This way, the player needs to actually be careful about what's above them, as they should be in an ancient city. But even still, if they have feather falling, or can just do a water bucket or hay bale clutch, they can survive some higher drops. But even with the Elytra being a bit more difficult to get, once you have it, if you just make a sugar cane and a gunpowder farm, every other mode of transportation is pretty much completely obsoleted, so how do we fix this? Well, when elytras were first introduced, they were pretty much just a glider. A very effective glider that let you travel and glide for very long distances. That was before rocket boosting was a thing, and they were a very balanced mode of transportation with this. They didn't just give you unlimited flight and obsolete every other type of transport, rather they were for situational use and very effective in certain situations. Now, of course I'm not saying we should just completely get rid of rocket boosting, but the type of rocket that is used for boosting should be harder to get, so that the player has to think about when they want to use a rocket boost, so that they're used more sparingly instead of the player just having stacks upon stacks of them in their inventory that they can endlessly spam. I believe they are something that should be used with the utmost caution and care. In other words, they need to be harder to make. I would prefer something that isn't farmable, but Dragon's Breath is hard enough and a pain enough to get that it could be a viable option, but something like diamonds could certainly work well, or Something else that's valuable and finite to the player. Maybe it's one firework for eight lapis blocks or eight copper blocks. I am only half joking there. Those 
most Minecraft players have way more of those resources than they ever end up needing. Or they just go buy them and don't mind them because they don't need any more of them. Anyhow, I think maybe a new item that's obtained very rarely out in the end could work better. Perhaps as part of the end update that we are hopefully going to get soon. So with this type of change, the player can still rocket boost, they just won't be doing it nearly as often and mindlessly. Elytra would be a great mode of transportation that can speed up travel, but it wouldn't be the best or perfect one. Another change I saw suggested that I really liked by a YouTuber named GreenJab is having Elytra not work in water or when it's raining. This could further push the idea of situational use as many items in Minecraft have, like the mace and trident for example. But finally, I did also promise a potential new mode of transportation altogether. Say you have two or more areas that you know you're probably going to be going back and forth between a lot. You don't want to have to travel with minecarts because then you have to manually push forward. And even still, they aren't that fast. But since you're spending so much time traveling this route, maybe you want to travel in a bit more of a luxurious manner. I'm suggesting trains. Not minecarts, but actual trains that you can build block by block and have move on tracks. These would be probably a bit faster than even the buffed minecarts, and also much more luxurious. But the catch is that they are much more expensive. So expensive that most players won't be able to replace all of their railroad tracks with them, unless they really spend a lot of time getting the resources and making the tracks. Rather, trains are meant for specific routes that you know you're going to probably travel a lot between, and you want to be able to move around while traveling. Maybe you even want to be able to set your spawn while traveling, or craft, or store things, or just not have to constantly press the move forward button, just so that you can hang around and take in the sights passing by, and maybe chat with some friends that are in the same train car as you. Again, these are mostly meant for some longer distant treks. Say, for example, you and your friends all built bases that are really far apart, but you want a quick and nicer way to travel between your bases. This is the exact type of thing that the train would be for. Not to mention, players have been wanting to make moving vehicles for a long time now, and I think this is just a really good and fun idea. Imagine fighting someone on a train. Because games really are just for having fun and being enjoyed. Besides, it's giving more options to players. Is that not in the spirit of Minecraft? And for those of you that are about to say trains don't fit the technical era of Minecraft, we have literal dynamite and minecarts. Minecraft isn't entirely stuck to the medieval theme. Sometimes things are added outside of it just because they're fun and make gameplay more interesting and enjoyable, and that's alright. And I think with all of these changes, exploration or adventure in Minecraft would be a whole lot better. But those are just my thoughts. Thank you guys for watching. Maybe, possibly consider subscribing if you enjoyed. I'm not gonna shout it at you though. So, goodbye for now, I hope to see you in the next one. See you guys.